Hey kids, this is Mr. Pickett. Um, this lecture is going to be over the topic of energy, specifically potential energy. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of the, the main concepts, um, talking about uh, um, energy in this way, and then I'll cut this off. And then our next topic is going to be kinetic energy. So when we start talking about um, energy in general, and let me uh, change my share screen, excuse me. Um, let's hit share. Let's go to whiteboard. There we go. When we talk about energy, um, we're talking about, oh, the ability uh, for something to do work. And work is an interesting concept. Um, we're going to get that to that into part three. But basically doing anything useful, like making an object move, lifting it up, pushing it around, having it accomplish a task, a task that's work. And so when we think about Energy. Energy is required in order to do work, and work can also generate energy. So when we think about energy, um, you know, a lot of time people think about the word calories. Um, they think about um, how happy you are. Uh, they think about how tired you are. Uh, but in, in our classroom, when we talk about energy, we're specifically talking about a unit that's called a joule. Now, when we spell joule, we're going to spell it J-O-U-L. E. So whenever we measure energy in this classroom, we almost always will measure it in joules, right? Joules. So I'm going to talk about potential energy here. And potential energy is usually super easy to have a conversation about. So I'm going to build a, a building right here. Fantastic. Um, and this building is so tall. So I'll add a couple other shapes in here. Let's, I don't know, let's add couple windows. That's a good one. That's another good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. And I should probably put a ground level window. All right. So this is a five-story building right here. And so um, at the top of this five-story building, we're going to put a ball up here and I'll have the ball hanging out right there. Fantastic. Now, if there was a person that was down below and the person is going to be right there. They've got a head, a right arm, a left arm, and only one leg, right? But those legs are together. That's fine, whatever. So we've got all of these objects that exist right here, okay? I'm assuming that this ball, if it was somehow pushed off the building, would hurt this person. It's a five-story tall building. Um, that's rather a, a rather a, a large drop. I'm assuming that that ball, like right now, isn't moving, so it's not really representing energy, but as it is moving, as it is moving, it's definitely going to represent something that has the ability to do damage or to do work. So in some way, shape, or form, this thing must eventually possess energy. But in this situation right here, the ball actually has energy, but it's in the form of gravitational potential energy, or GPE. Now, usually we talk about gravitational potential energy, and we just call it potential for energy or potential energy. However, there's a couple different types of potential energies, and I would like to focus on the one that gets used the most, which is gravitational potential energy. So because this object has gravity that's acting on it, and it is a distance away from the ground and has the ability to fall as a result, it has gravitational potential energy. And if I wanted to calculate the amount of potential energy it has, well, let's think about the things that possibly could make the potential for its energy to go up. Um, could it be bigger? Yes. You guys remember that the force of gravity is affected by the size of the masses. Okay. This is good. So if it's affected by the size of the masses, that, that means if I increase the mass some way, shape, or form, that's going to increase the gravitational potential energy. Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to add that. Um, I'm going to add mass. What else could potentially change the potential for energy? Well, where it exists at. So if this thing was a further way up, it's going to have more potential for energy. So it's height. How many meters is it away from the ground, right? What's, what's the distance away from where it's at to where it's going to fall? The further up it is, it's got more potential for energy. 
And then the other piece, which is not a normal thing that most people would end up connecting with, is the amount of gravity. So if you're on Earth, right, and the gravity is actually the acceleration due to gravity, that number is about 10, okay? So if I ever want to calculate the gravitational potential energy of an object, I need to take the object's mass in kilograms. It must be in kilograms. I need to then multiply its kilogram mass by the acceleration due to gravity, which on Earth, that's around 10 meters per second squared. And then I need to multiply it by its height. How far is it away from usually the floor or the ground? And the height needs to be in meters. Oh, just looking at some of the things on here. Awesome. And when we look at the symbol for gravitational potential energy, the joule is the symbol or the unit, excuse me, but the shorthand for it is just a capital J. All right, so gravitational potential energy is equal to MGH or mass times gravity times height. Hopefully this helps all of you and uh, uh, you know, stay curious and uh, hopefully this will help you for your first page. I'm looking at your, your packet of information right here. Uh, this is all about potential energies on page one. So that's good. Part two is gonna be about kinetic energy. Thanks kids.